you guys kind of started off as kind of like emulating uh, Tower of Power, uh, but uh, you kind of transitioned to doing your own original music as well, uh, culminating in your new CD. Kind of tell us a little bit about that, um, you know, focusing more on original music and tell us kind of what start, sparked you guys to do um, a CD. So uh, I guess I'll talk about it. Um, we, <laughs> we, yeah. we, um, so playing at Cafe 290 every second and fourth Monday of every, of every month. Um, of course, if there's a fifth Monday, we also do that as well. That's kind of where we started. Um, that's our home base, kind of. We've been doing that for like six years now, I think. And um, so we were doing all of our stuff there. And then our trombone player, Tom Gibson, he initiated um, a section of when we would, we'd stop and we'd take a break and we'd say, hey, you know, let's, let's do some haikus. And then he explained what it was to the audience. And then we'd have the audience come up with a haiku. Um, and they'd send all these up to us. And while I'm reading them out loud, the rhythm section would start playing some random music. Um, and I would just be inspired by the music and sing a melody sometimes to the, to the haikus that are written. And lo and behold, you know, things started happening. You know, the, the keyboard player would record what we're doing and um, some really cool melodies and songs would come out of that. Um, now, a couple of the guys in the band actually had some songs that were already written, and we were starting to play some of those um, before we kind of got to the haiku thing. So when the haiku thing came about and we started writing those original music from that, um, it just became a, a focus for us. You know, we realized this is something that we really want to do, and this is really cool, and and we all love it. Um, and so it just it just kind of started from there. The haiku session playing a cafe tonight. It's kind of like just a real intimate setting over there, obviously. So it's, um, it's, it's, and the audience really loves being a part of that and they, them sharing in this whole thing, um, just is a great experience and it's, it's um, a high energy thing. So I don't know, just, that's kind of how it started. I, I think also it, it showcases the talent of the band. That, I mean, uh, there's at the time, well, I mean, there's four great songwriters. We, yeah. Tony uh, Giordano was our original, keyboard player he's since has moved to Philadelphia he's been a big part of this Ian and then Frank Lisco and Gary Paulo and right. they've all written songs and I've I've just arranged them but but those, there's there's such talent in this band it's amazing yeah so um I guess kind of like to take one step backwards a little bit kind of tell us the name of the CD uh how many tracks you guys guys have on it and kind of give us an idea of what can we expect from the CD so the the name is the it's a self-titled CD, Bump in the Mango. Um, there's five tracks, um, and it uh, it I would say it's it's kind of a pop funk soul kind of mixture, a um, little R and B thrown in there too. Um, the, a couple of the songs on the so one of the songs is written by Gary Paolo, one of the songs is written by Frank Lisco, and then there's another song um, on there. That yeah, was, there's a song on there that was written in the 70s and covered by a band uh, called Topper. They, they wrote this song, and the trumpet player is a friend of mine, Jerry Brooks. He presented the song to me, and we all liked it, so I arranged it for, for Bump in the Mango. There's actually another song that we'll be doing probably on our next album that, that they also covered, too. So uh, you'll have to stay but tuned they for gave that us, one. They gave us permission to yeah. kind of take over the reins of this song, and we kind of made it our own. And then there was a couple of more songs that are on the CD also that um, that I wrote with Tony Giordano, the original keyboard player, um, that came out of our haiku sessions. Um, and uh, Jason Chapman, our bass player, he's uh, he's our current bass player. He wasn't the original bass player, but um, he he's a, a really fine producer and uh, has a recording studio of his own called The Brickyard in Alpharetta. And um, so he actually help produce and mix everything and um he also created all the artwork um on the album actually um but it's also photos that were taken by emily butler of us you know which is really great good friend yeah really good friend of ours and so um that's kind of just the, the whole kind of the whole thing right there it's it's a uh, it's just a it's only we just wanted to give it out you know a few songs to start with and like i said uh well i didn't say this earlier but i'm going to say now we got about 10 songs um, behind that, that were just kind of 
arranging and putting together now that we're trying to get out too. So. Yeah, you guys put together a nice package. I can see uh, your logos and your branding there. Um, I guess for those who may not have be familiar with your story, is there kind of give us a little uh, summary of kind of how you guys came up with Bumping the Mango. It's a very interesting and unique name. Uh, I know you probably get it like a million and one times, um, right. but uh, I kind of I think that's kind of interesting. But to me, I think another kind of follow up question to that after you answer the first part would be kind of what are the names that um, didn't quite make it to the become the Bump of the Mango? Did you have any alternatives <laughs> that didn't quite, that didn't make it? That maybe right. it? Well, we, we had a rehearsal at our bass players, our original bass player's house, and usually a party ensues afterwards. And uh, there was a, an exchange student that was staying with the bass player at the time. And uh, he just came up with the name Bumpin' the Mango out of the blue. And everybody just jumped on it. And uh, okay, fine. And then I woke up the next morning with buyer's remorse. And I said, well, how about just bumping? And I got outvoted. So basically, I can say alcohol was involved. That's about it. So for sure. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, I wish I had had a part in that whole thing. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for that initial rehearsal. Um, but yeah, it just it, it seems it seemed when I first joined the band too, and they said the name of the band is bumping the mango. And I thought to myself, God, that's an odd name. Yeah. And but when you think about what we, the kind of music we do, it just kind of really, it kind of, it kind of works, you know, bump in the mango. I mean, it's funk and soul, you know, it, it's gotta be something wacky out of the blue like that. So um, I really wish there was a better story of how that came up. There is. And, and, and whatever, whatever other names that came up, it was kind of funny. A lot of them were already used and we wanted something that nobody was using. And I don't think anybody touched this one with a hundred foot pole anyway, but All right. Uh, and it, yeah, so I, I can't remember what names didn't make it, uh, to be honest. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very unique name, and uh, <laughs> I, I, when I first heard it, I was like, "Who the heck are these guys?" <laughs> That's pretty cool, guy. Um, I guess uh, I kind of want to get an idea of uh, some of the kind of shows you guys have coming up. Um, I know you, like you said, you've been very busy uh, recently, and you have a lot of great gigs coming up. Kind of give us an idea of um, some of some things that you guys are working on um, coming coming down the pipeline? So um, there's a few different places that we play pretty much on a regular basis, um, once, a cool, you know, once every few months. Um, we're playing tomorrow night, as a matter of fact, um, June 15th, 15th uh, Friday, June 15th, at Mad Life uh, Stage and Studios in Woodstock. Uh, we've played there several times, and that's a really awesome venue. Yeah. Um, and then there's another place that we're playing in a couple of weeks called the Vista Room. Um, that's on Thursday, June 28th. Um, also another really nice venue, and that's in Decatur. And then we're, we're going to be playing at a place called uh, City Winery, which uh, I think a lot of people are familiar with. They have several of them in different uh, parts of the United States. Um, and the Atlanta location is fairly new. I think it's only been here for maybe a year and a half, two years or something like that. So we played there a few times already. Um, they do have national acts come through there as well, which is really cool. So we do a lot of Tower of Power stuff, and we, um, I got to see Tower of Power play there not too long ago. Um, and I was thinking to myself, man, we were on the same stage with those guys. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so we're playing there July 5th. Uh, that's a Thursday night. Um, that's the next time we're playing at City Winery. And then um, we're playing Candler Park Festival September 30th. The, 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 the Fall festival. Fall, yeah, we're closing the festival. We're closing the we're fall ready. festival on September 30th at Candler Park, um, and then we do some private parties, some weddings, and corporate functions here and there. And, um, New Year's Eve. and then New Year's Eve, we're playing at a place called Tannery Row, which is in Beaufort. Um, and this place has been around for a couple of years, but we just played there for the first time um, a couple of weeks ago, and we crushed it over there. It's a huge, like, kind of warehouse kind of place, and had over 200 people show up and sold a bunch of merchandise and people just fell in love with us. The, the place, the actual owners came out to us and said, you know, we want to book you guys for New Year's immediately, ask us about New Year's Eve. And then also said, we want to book you some more dates, obviously through the, the year. And if there's, you know, just tell us what dates you have. If there's bands booked, we'll just bump them for you. Cause that's what they do for bumping the manga. They bump other bands. <laughs> beware, right? Bands, other bands. Beware. <laughs> that's right. So yeah, um, that's, I think that's, 
pretty much most of what we've got going on. I mean, we're always working at, and getting new gigs and playing new places. Uh, we played at a place called Jimmy's Tequila recently too. That's in Doraville and played there a couple times. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for new places. Actually, Paul and I both are kind of the main guys who book the band right now. So um, we're trying to get that moving as much as we can. We're trying to do more festival work, um, you know, get in front of a bigger audience as much as we can. So I think people need to hear what we do and they need to hear this kind of music and be exposed, you know? So is that part of you guys' grand mission? So what is the grand mission for Bumpin' the Mango? Where would you guys like to see this, um, see this thing go? Well, we definitely would like to have uh, a full CD of original music, um, possibly starting out as an opening act for a national act going on tour. And then um, hopefully the, the main goal is to become our own, you know, national act and do our own tour and have you know huge audiences come come out to see us and have to get an opening act for us you know that's kind of the main goal and you know we sell t-shirts and hats and shot glasses and stickers and now we have our cd our first cd which is also available for download exclusively on itunes right now um, but at the end of the month it's going to be available everywhere else um, all the mainstream media platforms like spotify and amazon and all that stuff so you'll be able to stream it and download it that way um, but yeah we're we're just trying to do the original thing and um, that's kind of the main focus. I mean, we still will do some cover stuff here and there, um, but uh, we really want to make this, um, you know, thing happen. And you know, we want to we want to do our original thing and make it happen and get get to a place where we we're touring and people want to come out to see us and we have huge audiences everywhere, you know, all over the world, really. Sounds like a fine plan to me. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on, yeah, man. You can join us. <laughs> I know, right? Can that be a, a, a your on your your on uh, your concert videographer there? <laughs> on tour, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> Come on, man. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll document the whole thing behind the scenes. That's what. Yeah, we'll that do. would be very cool. Actually, we need yeah. to do that. We need all the help we can get. Let's just say that. So, yeah. yeah. The beginning yeah. stages. We'll talk a little bit after. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But uh, for those guys, for those people who want uh, want to follow you guys. Um, kind of see some of your tour dates that you mentioned and uh, also maybe purchase some of your um, your music. How can they do so? So we've got uh, our website, bumpinthemango.com. Um, you can actually see our calendar on there as well as um, all of our um, uh, pictures and, and some videos on there is, uh, is really set up that way. And then we also have um, a link for um, to, to, for people to purchase our, our music that way as well and yeah. download it. Yeah, it's on our merch page on, yeah. our, on our main website. We're on Facebook and we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Right. The, some of the main players, I guess. So. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much all of the stuff that we've got going, man. We got the, the website, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, people can download it through iTunes right now, like I said earlier. And then at the end of this month, it'll be available through all the other media um and but they can always just go to our website and download it straight from there and that's where they can find out where we're playing and what's happening we uh like i said earlier i think we play every second and fourth monday of cafe 290 uh at, every second and fourth monday of every month at cafe 290 um and, and the fifth monday yeah. if there is one we'll play there as well so they can always come check us out there there you go. You go check um, Bump and the Mango out loud, or you go check them out online. Get one of those cool T-shirts. I'm gonna see if I can get me one too. There you go. Hey, can, can we name the guys in the band? We probably haven't made. Yeah, we. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, Actually, yeah. let's go for uh, it. The drummer of the band, Jeff Gill, uh, bass player Jason Chapman, guitar player Frank Lisco, uh, keyboard player Patch Drowser. Oh. Uh, go ahead. You do the horn. Kevin Lyons on on trumpet myself on trumpet, Tom Gibson on trombone, Sam Skelton on tenor saxophone, and Gary Paolo on very saxophone. And then I'm the lead singer, Ian Michael Brew, and that's Bumping the Mango. Yeah. So for, as we head out here, kind of give us um, your kind of summary of you know, what can we expect when we listen to uh, Bumping the Mango, either live or on recorded? Um, lots of energy, lots of fun. Um, there's a lot of love in the band from all the guys amongst all of us and we really i think portray that on stage and i think the audiences that hear us really feel that um but the music that we play is always a lot of fun and, and extreme energy um me as the lead singer you know i'm a 
a big guy, but I'm kind of a teddy bear. You know, I get in people's faces and I get out there with my wireless mic and I'll come right up to you and sing to you, but it's in a non non invasive way, you know, <laughs> non aggressive. But it's it's really just a, a, a lot of fun, and I and I like to dance, and I encourage people to always dance to what we do, and most of the time it happens. So um, yeah, it's just a fun, um, ec uh, and exciting, energy filled room when we play. Yeah, yeah, lots of love and energy. Yeah, I, I recommend people go out and, and check you guys out live, especially because um, how many times you get to dance from like a, 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 a five piece horn band, a, a, a ten piece band, but with five horns. I mean, that's right. like amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's a, to, to me because I've played in a lot of bands for a long time, for over twenty some years, and having the five horns, that's like the the extra special bonus, man. You don't usually get to hear that very often, um, so it's it just makes all the difference. It makes it sound so much better having those horns without a doubt. All right. And then on that note, we'd like to thank you guys again. We're here with Bumpin' the Mango. Um, make sure you check them out online. You know, they're everywhere and performing uh, uh, as basically as a residency at Cafe 290 every second and fourth Monday of the month and sometimes on the fifth Monday too if there's one. So make sure you guys check them out. Thank you guys for, for joining us today. And um, Thank you. Thank you.